There's a ton of work going on inside and just outside the boathouse this week. Outside, the pine decking is coming together and you'll get a closer look at that. Inside, the covering boards get glued up into two complete runs from stem to stern. Sam and I are cutting scarves and the covering boards. We got a lot of shape when we steam bent them, but not quite enough length. So we're cutting high to butts, which means we found these pieces of material and we're cutting, we're scarfing this side as well as this side. We don't want to scarf a traditional scarf because the way it will look once it's glued up and fared down. Draw you a picture. Traditional scarf, we're doing a 12 to 1, so 12 inches length of scarf for every inch of thickness, and we're inch and a half, so the scarf would be 80, 18 inches. But where this top feathered edge meets the other plank, you'll see the glue no matter how careful we are. So we are making nibbed scarves. We cut three eighths of an inch down before we cut the scarf in that direction. So three eighths of an inch down is what I'm doing. I made all these cuts as guides. These saw curves are my guides for depth. I made my lines and hopefully when I'm done, those will fit beautifully. And then we'll have one sharp line on the top of the covering boards. And Sam took a different approach to cutting out his scarfs. Instead of making kerf cuts and using the ads as KP did, he just went for it with the power planer and judged based on the pencil markings. If you remember from his introduction last week, his boat shop experience is mostly with large work boats like the AJ Mirwald, where the power planer is extremely common for all sorts of jobs. So this was a natural and comfortable method for him. And freshly returned from the White Mountains with Robin, Steve showed another example of how to get it done with his weapon of choice, the ads. And Tennessee let us borrow Wes again. The last time he was around was for help inside the boat constructing the workbench. And he got right to work on the last remaining hide a butt for the starboard side. The goal for the day is to get the underside cleaned up, routed, sanded, and painted. Yes. It's a high task, but I think if all four of us work on it together, we can get it done today. Because it's beautiful weather. To get one coat on would be excellent. Yeah. So I'll help you clean these up. Yep. As all of the work has been proceeding in the boathouse, the pine decking has been coming along outside. 
For the longer runs on either side of the house, the strakes are glued together using a nibbed scarf joint similar to the one being used for the covering boards. KP and Adam here are cleaning up the epoxy that squeezed out of the joint while Sam and Aiden route the inboard edges and sand in preparation for several coats of paint. All right. You don't even need to sand that super smooth. I mean, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, it looks great. And he's quick and... He switched to the 120. Okay. So it probably is going to be a little smoother. Sam and I, Adam and Aiden, have been going hard on the decking. So these are all the planks we painted up. I'm gonna get my hat. Working hard to put some coats of paint on the deck planking. This is the underside, so that when you're down below, it'll be nice and shiny and white. Starting to look nice. A bit of fairing compound applied between coats will get sanded down and hide any knots or other grain and provide a perfectly smooth finish once it's done. Sometimes it works like you plan it. Who's counting? Oh. With all the extra help, Steve had two free hands to take on a small project that will be nice to have done later on. Here he's getting started on some butt blocks that might be needed when the deck is laid, but will definitely be needed to provide backing for any hardware that gets fastened in an area of the deck that would benefit from more support.
if, if you want, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, there's no way to do it. and then I looked at the drive time and I have to be somewhere at 4.30, 40 minutes away. Well, 41 minutes away, but math is easier. Drive faster. That does work. Wes, moving on from the covering boards, started work on the grubs for the forward and aft hatches to be built upon. When we laid down the covering boards, we had it sneak out over the edge just a hair so that I was able to fare down this edge to be in line with the changing bevel of the hull. And so I took the power planer, planed it down to match that changing bevel all along the boat. This hull will be painted this edge will be painted, it'll round over, we'll oil the top of the covering board like we're oiling the rest of the deck. Getting there. We've gotten creative on clamping this covering board because we can't just clamp and call it good. The shelf is in the way, there's a lot of curve to the boat, and so we've used a number of things. Screws every so often where we know we want to put a final screw. We've used clamps and pads. We've also used some pretty sturdy ratchet straps. But doing this, we were afraid clamping it down would push it inboard here. So we've pulled out our bench dog to provide a pressure outboard to keep it in place. So it's working. It's creative. This particular scarf was especially tricky. So we gave it to Wes, our volunteer. <laughs> he did great. He did great. But we had to get super creative on clamping it because the knee is here and there's nowhere to clamp to. And so we used a bunch of Vol vectors and fulcrums and a huge C clamp and more ratchet straps and yet more creative clamping. But it works. Well, if I can fit 
finish this. Wes is gonna hold the whole thing up. It is my life mission to complete this stupid thing. That's awesome. Doesn't help you, I know. Sorry. I've got some wedges pulled out, air compressors fired up, brand new blade in the circular saw, and I've got some wedges. We need to grab an impact gun. And what I'm imagining is someone will go just ahead of me and pop the screw just before I get to it with the saw. Okay. Because some of them, especially like this one, are proud and I'm not going to be able to float them. Oh, right. So if someone goes ahead and pops the screw, and I think that same person can go ahead and I got some very fine wedges. And if it's somewhere like here where the camber is getting us to float a little bit anyways, we don't need to worry about it. But if we have a spot where we're hard. nice and tight and hard to a deck yeah. beam, we should just slide a wedge in there. And we, I want to raise it like a sixteenth. Okay. Like the okay. blade is set to cut to the bottom of the covering board. I just yeah. don't want to cut into the deck beam. So I'd like like a sixteenth of an air gap between that's all we're looking for yeah. and then uh, I'll have the compressor fired up that's going and the cords basically if someone can kind of tend to the cord on the circular saw that I'm cutting so that doesn't get hummed up and I don't have to think about that yep. probably that same person can follow me with the air gun and just every few minutes give a little blast in front of me and make sure that I can see the line well mm -hmm. And then if someone wants to go just ahead of that, pop some screws and tuck a couple light wedges.
I mean, if you go faster, it's smoother. It will actually okay. be easier. May I? Yes. So if you go... Okay. Okay. So I'm staying, again, staying on the epoxy. So I think I was waiting for it to bite in. No, you, in fact, you don't want it to bite in. You want it to be just smooth shavings. You don't want it to bite. 